Tao overflows. Enlightenment, the ultimate flowering. It is erroneous for an awakened one to say that he is enlightened. All he can say that enlightenment surrounds. Enlightenment is the disappearance of ego, ego, desires and all that is tangible and connected with the mind. Enlightenment is the state of no mind. It is a state when drop has merged in the ocean. It is the beginning of enlightenment or one shore. The other shore is when the ocean becomes the drop by lending its qualities or ocean becomes the drop. This way the riverbed created between the two shores of consciousness, two shores for consciousness or love to flow. Guided by harmony, thoughts and actions flow in the outer world. But there is a question, but there is a question. If masters do not speak of enlightenment, how the seekers will get the first glimpse? And this first far away glimpse is relevant for seekers inward journey. As a result, for your search to attain a new impetus, I am speaking to you on various aspects of enlightenment and also for those in whom the seed has blossomed. The process of blossoming of consciousness is known as enlightenment. Enlightenment is not a ritual. The moment you make enlightenment a ritual, you have moved far away from the reality. There are certain things that you have to understand about enlightenment. Very often it is asked if enlightenment is accidental. This is something very significant to understand. Enlightenment is always accidental. This does not mean that you do not have to try for it. There is another equally important thing that you have to remember. Certainly your trying is not going to bring it. Your effort is not going to achieve it. But making the effort Searching in all directions, in every possible way, one day it happens. Certainly not because of your efforts, but because of your intense urge. A tremendous intensity like a flame within you, but it is always accidental. It comes like a quantum leap. You cannot say it happened because I did that. Otherwise, things would have been very simple. Enlightenment is not a ritual. After the master is no more, and also with the passage of time, the inner search becomes always a mere ritual. Look at the Buddhist monks all over the world. They are making it a ritual. For example, Buddha was sitting under the Bodhi tree when enlightenment happened. So in every Buddhist monastery, there are Bodhi trees and they are sitting waiting for enlightenment to happen as if 
Bodhi tree has something to do with enlightenment. Furthermore, Buddha had eaten that evening a sweet dish made of milk and rice. Buddhist monks think that has something to do with enlightenment. So for them it has become very spiritual food. Before sitting for meditation they will eat the rice pudding that is the name of the sweet dish. But enlightenment has nothing to do with such things. Also Buddha was sitting in the lotus posture for enlightenment. So every Buddhist monk sits in the same posture. Perhaps the posture has something to do with it. The posture has nothing to do with Buddha's enlightenment, but millions throughout the history have been sitting in that posture, torturing their legs. And now Westerners have started learning yoga postures in which the lotus posture is most important because Buddha became enlightened in that posture. For a Westerner who has been sitting on the chair his whole life, the lotus posture is difficult. In a cold country, you do not sit on the ground. His legs are in tremendous torture, but he tries hard. It takes almost two to three months for him to attain to the lotus posture, but only to the lotus posture. And then he waits for his whole life for enlightenment sitting in lotus posture. It does not happen that way. Enlightenment has to do something with inner happening. When you look into the experience of the enlightened ones, you will find uniqueness with each master. Existence never repeats itself. Rumi danced for 35 hours continuously. In that whirling, he became aware of the unmoving within. Something was moving on the surface, but deep within there was nothing. It is like the wheel of a vehicle. Wheel moves on the axle but axle remains fixed. It does not move, but it simply provides the facility or opportunity for the wheel to move. Rumi became enlightened. This was the unique way and unique only because enlightenment happened to Rumi that way. Sitting under the Bodhi tree, Buddha attained enlightenment. This is another unique way, only because of Buddha. And now look at the Buddhist monks following this like a ritual. Look at the followers of Rumi. They go on whirling throughout the life as a ritual in that certainly they become great performers, but not enlightened. The world has produced only countable enlightened ones because of the human mind that always shelters in rituals and thus the superficial. So it is not a certain sequence of cause and effect that brings enlightenment. Your search, your intense longing and your readiness to do anything whatsoever. Perhaps they create a certain aroma around you in which the great accident becomes possible. 
Buddha did all that was possible. He attended all the schools of yoga available at that time, every method, but nothing happened. He even lived, renounced the food and lived on one grain of rice for six months. Nothing happened. But you cannot manage it. Every seeker has to begin from the beginning in his own unique way. You cannot learn by watching somebody. That is what all the religions have been doing. There is a certain prayer, a certain posture, a certain ritual and a certain way of breathing. Nothing helps. I have a small story of Leo Tolstoy. The Archbishop of Russia became very annoyed because on a small island, three men had become to be known as saints. Now this is against Christianity. In Christianity, a saint has to be certified by the church as if to be a saint is a degree or a title. The church has to ordain the sainthood in, on the appropriate person. The English word saint comes from the word sanction. When the church gives the sanction to become a saint, the archbishop was very angry that without his sanction, these three people had become known as saints and thousands of people were going to touch their feet and seek their blessings. Naturally, this was making him very angry. As a result, one day he finally decided to go and see what kind of saints these were. He went in a motorboat, reaching the island. It was a very small island. Only those three people lived there. It was early in the morning and those three were sitting under a tree. They looked very simple, uneducated and illiterate ones. The Archbishop on the way was very nervous about facing these saints who have influenced thousands of people. But now he saw there was no problem as these looks idiots. He went there and they all touched his feet. He was well satisfied and he said, Do you think you are saints? They said, We are uneducated, illiterate, poor people. How can we think such high things? They are not for us. What, what can we do? People go on coming. We try to prevent them. We tell them that they should go to you but they do not listen. The Archbishop inquired authority, authoritatively, what is your prayer? This is important to understand. We will continue in another tomorrow, enough for now.